perfect response, and we'll be looking for that moving forward to get chapel started. So as soon as I say good afternoon, if you all can just keep it in mind to uh, get quiet so that we can get started with chapel, um, so that we can end, end on time and, and make sure that we respect everyone's time. Um, I am Reverend Adams. I'm the Dean of Spiritual Life and Equity here at the school. Um, it is a wonderful, I'm so excited to be back here in the chapel. Uh, this is a space for faith formation, but um, for the Hill, it is a space of community and of belonging. And so we're looking forward to a new year of new messages from our students and our faculty, of hymns, of singing, and of prayers that we hope will speak to all of your hearts um, at some point. The first few weeks might be a little bit of a learning curve for all of us, even if you've been here before, because this is our first time officially back in the chapel this way. So please bear with us as we enter back into this space um, with the new scheduling. So I would like to invite uh, next our uh, next the Reverend Conf and Conf Martin. Reverend Adams and I are both really, really pleased to be in this space together again with all of you. The last time we had the chance to do that was with our six formers for baccalaureate, and so it's wonderful to look at. And anyone who spoke last year in chapel knows how weird it was to speak to empty pews. So it's a joy to speak to faces. As Reverend Adam said, I'm the associate chaplain here at the Hill, and it's a joy to be together. My role today is primarily one of introduction, so you recognize some of the faces you'll see in our space this year. First, um, a real gift to our community, Mr. Conrad, is our school organist, and so he will be accentuating and supporting our services with, um, with organ music, and is really a gift to us. So please join me in appreciating Mr. Conrad. And his They'll be facilitating worship services, speakers, programs, and events to represent and nurture the diverse faith traditions present on our campus. They'll be helping with announcements in Today on the Hill, as well as before chapel, about different programs and events that are happening each week. And we're also fortunate, and we'll hear today from our five sixth form officiants. They are the ones who will lead us through the chapel liturgy each day. So this year, we're fortunate to be working with Kat Moore, Anna Schlegel, Wesley Connolly, Chelsea Mills, and Taylor Folk. So they'll be leading the prayers, introducing the hymn and the speaker, and dismissing us from chapel. Today, as I said just a moment ago, they will be reflecting on some aspect of weekday chapel and what it means to them, that while we were still able to gather in a different way last year, as this is one of the pillars, as Mr. Lehman said, of our hillness, we're really excited to hear their thoughts on this important tradition and opportunity for community building and what it means to them. So I'm going to let Kat come up now, and she's going to speak about why we have chapel and why it's important to her and to our community. Why do I think we have chapel? I think we have chapel to grow closer as a community by learning from each other, by sharing stories and experiences and what we have gained from them. I think that chapel means something a little bit different to everyone. To me, chapel is important because it shows what it is all about. Tradition, community, and trust. It is a time we get to see a more vulnerable side of people that isn't always shown. It is a time when we forget about anything else going on in our lives. A big test next period, an important audition tonight, or a big game this weekend. It is a time in our day that allows us to just stop and breathe. It is a time where everyone comes together to hear a story or a lesson. Chapel is important to our community because it reminds us that we all have a lot more in common than we think. Chapel has helped me see people in a different light countless times. Whether it is hearing a past experience they went through or the way they look at life, I gained a little more insight into what they are like below the surface. Speakers have talked about struggling to find themselves, losing a loved one, or an important lesson they've learned. Regardless of what they share, they are being vulnerable, which isn't very easy to do. Every day that we all come together to listen to someone's experience, we get one step closer to the person next to us. Chapel serves as a reminder to myself, and hopefully to all of you, that we are all in this together. Hi guys, 
I'm Anna. So I'm answering the question, why do we sing hymns in chapel? The famous Christian Chenoweth, who many in the theater department may know of, once said, we sing because we can't speak anymore. Song is an outlet to express emotions we can't put into words. Hymns in chapel are an important part of our school community for this reason. Our community is strengthened through the unity of our collective voice, regardless of our abilities or talents. In chapel, our voices blend together in a glorious, messy, beautiful melody. Singing hymns during chapel is one of the purest forms of a judgment-free zone. It's difficult to distinguish one voice from your neighbors in a loud room full of passionate singers. We sing hymns to remind us of our past friends and peers, like in A Thousand Hands, as a reminder of the rich history of our school, like in Upon the Hill Our City Stands, or to reinforce values as our uh, 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 to reinforce our values as a collective body, like in Lord Through Changing Days. Finally, singing hymns in chapel is a unique experience most individuals otherwise wouldn't get to experience in their daily lives. By notably taking time out of your day to reflect, to connect, and grow in a chapel environment is one of the most powerful and kind things you can do for yourself. We reinforce these ideas through singing hymns in chapel. So we're now going to sing um, Lord Do Changing Days, which can be found um, in the White Book on page 4, which I think is on that. Please hand out those white folders along your queues. Make sure everybody has one. You can share some if you need to. And please stand.
Thank you. I'm really looking forward to the fact that on Monday we will have our first normal chapel service of the year now that we've gotten oriented here. And actually one of the folks you just heard from a few minutes ago, Kat, is going to be our first student speaker. So we're really excited and we'll practice the, the routines and all of those sorts of things then. A couple of logistical pieces to wrap up and then we will um, dismiss. So Monday and Wednesday next week we have chapel because Wednesday and Friday are switching in the schedule. So we'll be back here Monday and Wednesday next week in these same seats. We will have another seat switcheroo after that. So just when we get used to finding the right spot, when we get to our, uh, and then at that point we'll do seating by forms. We hope starting the following Monday, our sixth form will be here and uh, everybody else will, will fill in around that and that will be sent out from the Dean's office and we'll give you some cushion and time to learn those routines as well. Uh, one of the things we have to do today, and as well when we go to our new seating, is practicing how to get out of this building, because it is not as simple as exiting a building might seem. Um, as you notice when you came in, we only came in from the back doors, and we're going to continue that while we're in this seating pattern. Once we're finished with the advisor chapel seating, you'll be able to come in whatever door is closest to, um, to your seat. But when we leave today, there's a couple moving parts that need to go on, and so I just want to talk those through then we'll practice our dismissal and then we'll get out. So, if you are sitting in those skinny three-person pews over there or in the four pews facing me, so Mr. Belusha, Ms. Aaron, Ritz, Dr. Pearson, and Mr. Patterson are the four faculty behind the show. If you're in these three-person pews or those, when we dismiss, you are gonna walk over here toward me and we're gonna send you out. There is a door back here. I'm not taking you to some chapel dungeon or anything like that. There really is a door. Uh, there's not a dungeon anyway. There's a basement. Um, anyway, so we're going to head out that way. So that's where, and we'll start front to back. So we'll do those four pews there, and then Gabby, yeah, yeah, I don't know who else is in your pew, but your row, and then one, 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 front to back. All right? So that takes care of everybody over there. If you are here, you are going to head out the side doors onto the quad. You're going to head out the side doors onto the quad. In normal chapel, right, when everybody is sitting in um, by form, there's a reason that we go out that way. If you notice, Mr. and Mrs. Lehman are sitting in that pew back there. That's always been reserved as the head of school's pew. So on your way out, if you're going that way, say good morning, greet them, make eye contact. Don't get your phone out while you're walking out of the building, right? We're all going to lunch next. We all know where we're going, okay? Greet them. Anybody know 
who is buried out here on the chapel porch? Any student know who's buried out here on the chapel porch? Yes, do you know? You're in my dorm. Yes, who's buried out there? Second, so close, John Mays is buried there. John Mays is the son of the Reverend Matthew Mays, our school's founder. He was the second head of school here at Hill. Uh, and he asked to be buried there, buried there for a specific reason. Why did he want to be buried there to haunt you? No, just kidding. Isabella, why did he want to be buried there? He wanted to be close to the sixth form. He always wanted to be close to the sixth form because this is where the sixth form traditionally sits in chapel and will sit in chapel once we get through these opening two weeks. So, as Mr. Lehman and I like to say, you walk out and greet the living head of school and then your respects to the second head of school, deceased, John Mays, who really helped our school become the place that it is today. We're gonna go front to back, then when you get to about where Mr. and Mrs. Dahlhoff are sitting, you're gonna need to walk forward then and go out that way. So if you're behind Mr. Lehman and behind Mr. and Mrs. Dahlhoff, you still don't go out the back. You let everybody who's up here in the front half get out first, front to back, and out the side doors, and then you come forward and do the same thing. This is our first day doing it this way. There's also a camera in the, in the way, so, Walk attentively and carefully. We'll get both those doors open. Everybody knows where they're going. You all out here, you all that way. Great, last piece to practice. In your pamphlet of Lord Through Changing Days, at the very bottom of the front page, it says dismissal. This is a really important piece that everybody likes to mumble through it so we can get to lunch, but we're not gonna mumble through it. So, our efficient, it's gonna be me today, is gonna ask you to stand, I'm not doing that yet, and I'm gonna say, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. And you are going to respond, thanks be to God. All right, we're gonna do it together. I will wait for you to stop talking to offer the dismissal. So there's this funny tendency that we all have when we stand up is that we start talking. So stand up, not yet, not yet, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> stop talking, and then we'll go through the dismissal. And the last piece, all these pieces I'm trying to remember, you will head across the quad, right, Mr. Lehman, and around to lunch? Not on the grass. Not on the grass. Stay on the paths, but you're going around. So you're not going back that way to go to the dining hall. You're going around to where we line up to go in for a buffet meal. So do not go straight back toward the, pat toward the seal patio. Across the quad, on the paths, around by where the bell is, and into the dining hall that way, because everybody else is going to be leaving lunch to come here for the second service. All right, that's a lot of information. So please stand for the dismissal. Go in peace to love and serve the